immediately following a treasonous attempt to overthrow Quindiliu Okalani in January of 1893, enemies of the kingdom, now calling themselves the provisional government, departed for Washington, D.C. to sign a treaty of annexation with the United States. Their sole intention was to achieve annexation at any cost. However, before the United States Senate could ratify the proposed treaty, newly elected President Grover Cleveland, confronted with the facts of the overthrow, withdrew the treaty from further consideration and vowed never to allow the Treaty of Annexation to be resubmitted. Having failed at this first attempt to obtain a Treaty of Annexation with the United States, the Provisional Government on July 4, 1894, declared itself to be the Republic of Hawaii and maintained its opposition to the restoration of the Hawaiian Kingdom government as called for by President Cleveland. On June 16, 1897, with Grover Cleveland now out of office, a second effort to annex the Hawaiian Islands to the United States was attempted. A treaty was signed in Washington, D.C between representatives of the self-proclaimed Republic of Hawaii and the newly elected President of the United States, William McKinley. The following day in Washington, Her Majesty Queen Liliuokalani submitted a formal letter of protest to President McKinley, asserting that this proposed treaty of annexation violated the existing Treaty of 1850 between the Hawaiian Kingdom and the United States. Because said treaty ignores all professions of perpetual amity and good faith made by the United States in former treaties, it is thereby in violation of international law. Therefore, I, Liliuokalani of Hawaii, do hereby call upon the President to withdraw said treaty from further consideration. I ask the Honorable Senate of the United States to decline to ratify that treaty. Word of what had transpired in Washington soon reached the islands. Anticipating that the U.S. Senate would reconvene in December to consider the second attempt at annexation, an aggressive campaign was initiated, intending to fortify the Queen's second letter of protest. On September 6, 1897, James Kaulia, president of the Hui Aloha Aina, the Hawaiian Patriotic League, gave a stirring speech before thousands at Palace Square in Honolulu. He said agreeing to annexation was like agreeing to being buried alive. He asserted that a mass refusal by the people could prevent annexation. Let us take up the honorable struggle. Do not be afraid. Be steadfast in aloha for your land and be united in thought. Protest forever the annexation of Hawaii until the very last patriot lived. A petition to the President, Congress, and people of the United States, otherwise known as the Monster Petition, was read and approved at this rally, asking that no further steps be taken toward the ratification of the treaty. The men and women of the Hui Aloha Aina, through the efforts of many loyal and dedicated Hawaiian subjects, launched a full-scale petition drive that lasted approximately two months. They went from island to island, from shore to shore, leaving no stone unturned in their efforts to document opposition to the proposed treaty. The petition was printed in both English and Hawaiian. We, the undersigned, native Hawaiian subjects and residents who are members of the Hawaiian Patriotic League of the Hawaiian Islands and other citizens who are in sympathy with the League, earnestly protest against the annexation of the Hawaiian Islands to the United States of America in any form or shape. The Hui Aloha Aina was founded specifically to support the Queen and to protest annexation. They described the men's branch as 7,500 men from the different islands and the women's branch as 11,000 women. The women did a lot of the work. Mrs. Laura Mahelona went to Kona and Kau and she went in those days, of course there was no airplane, so there were these um, steamer 
mail boats, you know, that would go to every village once a week or so and deliver the mail. So her method was she went from North Kona down to Kau, stopped in every village along the way and left the blank petitions with the chapter presidents of the village chapters of the Hui and told them, gave them the instruction, re instructions and said, call a meeting and have all of your people sign this and I'll come back in a week and I'll pick up the signed petitions all the way North Kona to Kau. So the following week, she came back and at every little village, it wasn't just the chapter president coming out to meet her, but people came out to give her lays and to express their mahalo because she had a, you know, brought to them this instrument by which they could make their will be known. And so the story in the Kealoha Aina newspaper is that every time she went you know, I got off the boat and received the petitions. She was covered in lace so that she couldn't even see her dress, and she'd have to go on the boat, take them all off, and then at the next stop, the exact same thing would happen. Um, and she gathered um, 4,216 signatures in Kona and Kau. When the members of Hui Kalai Aina and Hui Aloha Aina went out to collect signatures, it wasn't like today where you have to stand around and beg people to you know, sign a petition. People were looking for them. They were seeking them out. And everybody, you know, I mean, it was men, women, and children signed these petitions. And I'm just trying to make the point that Hawaiians really didn't have either power or money or government to preserve their nationhood. What they had was their will. Despite the fact that for about a century, Hawaiians had been dying, the population had been plummeting, despite the fact that we had no real power, and, and the United States was a powerful country, Hawaiians acted with remarkable unanimity to preserve their independence, to preserve their lahui. By November of 1897, they had successfully gathered the signatures and support of over 21,000 patriots. In a joint effort, the Hui Kalai Aina also gathered through their petition drive nearly 17,000 signatures. Together there were over 38,000 signatures representing 95 percent of the Native Hawaiian population. The estimated population at that time of Kanaka Maoli was 40,000. So virtually every Kanaka Maoli signed. Therefore Every Kanaka Maoli today can find at least one ancestor on those petitions. And in Honolulu, where the original petitions were brought from the National Archives in Wakine Kona, Washington, crowds of people have gathered to seek, to emit the names of their ancestors there. And you see them weep and lament discovering these names and all the mana, the special spiritual energy and power in that experience that they feel transmitted to them. And the message is clear. It calls upon us today, Ikea Ba, to be my God who took a stand, we, Kanaka Maoli people, must resist, must oppose this annexation of our homeland to the United States forever. I want you to realize how important this document is. Uh, to my mind, this is the most important discovery in Hawaiian history in the 20th century. It reveals our ancestors to be heroes to be people of greater wisdom, ability, and strength than we knew. I thought, as many people did, that our kupuna simply went home and wept after their monarchy was destroyed. Now we realize this wasn't true. This document changes everything. We are a different people because of it. We can't go back to that old image. James Kaulia, David Kalokalani, John Richardson and William Auld traveled to Washington to deliver the petitions to the United States Senate. In December, 
While they watched from the gallery, the text of the monster petition was read on the floor of the Senate, and the signature petitions were formally accepted. As a result of these protests from the Queen and her people, the United States Senate failed to obtain the required two-thirds vote as mandated by the U.S. Constitution to ratify a treaty. By March of 1898, the Treaty of Annexation was dead. And David um, Kalawa Kaleni, uh, James Kaulia, and William Ald traveled home victorious. They were victorious. They came home and they told everybody, we did it. All of your hard work, they listened to us. The treaty is dead. <laughs>